First things first, we got former Patriots coach Eric Mangini back with us. And speaking of the Patriots, they got their hands full Sunday night when Tom Brady comes back to town as a member of the Bucks, the defending Super Bowl champion Bucks. A new book out now by Seth Wickersham details the Patriots dynasty during Brady and Belichick's 20 year run together. One excerpt said Brady wanted to have a face to face meeting with Belichick before officially leaving town. But Bill would not make himself available. Instead, that they could just talk on the phone. Breakups are rough. <laughs> Looking at you guy from high school who shall remain nameless but did the same thing to me. Anyway, Belichick was asked about that yesterday. Take a listen. Name. No, that's not true. And, and I mean, I heard a few things about, you know, this book. And it sounds like it's a lot of, you know, second, third, and fourth hand comments. So, but I'm not going to get into that. I'm going to focus on this game and try to prepare for the Bucks. All right, Coach Mangini, what is your reaction to the latest report on Brady and Belichick? I think it, it, it's always interesting. One, one of the things that, that has made New England such a great organization for so long is the, the coldness and, and the, the economic efficiency of, of decision-making and the unemotional aspect of decision-making. And you look at the guys that, that have... Uh, moved on there, whether it's Ty Law, Lawyer Malloy, Rabel potentially getting traded, Gronkowski potentially getting traded, William McGinnis, Drew Bledsoe. Seymour. I mean, the list goes, the list goes, Seymour, the list goes on and on. And 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 people who cheer for the team want that, and 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 they they appreciate that. And he's often been praised for moving on from players before it, it's too late. And it's it's um, it's a hard thing to do. And it's 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 not a, a fun thing to do, but it's a necessary thing to do, and it's it's a part of the job that that Bill does really really well, and it, it's served them well for a long time. Now, it it doesn't bode well for for the people who are going through it, but it doesn't surprise me that that that's the case. He cut Bernie Kosar during the middle of the season. Bernie's as close to an icon in Cleveland as as you can possibly get, and and. You know, he made that decision. So when you benefited from it for, for years and years, it, it's hard to be surprised by it when it when it eventually happens to you. All right, Coach, we're having Seth, the author of this book, on tomorrow, and a lot of little excerpts were released. And I normally wouldn't do this, but ever since we added Chris Broussard to the show, award-winning journalist, we now all have to be a little more journalistic. So I have to ask you two questions here because one of the <laughs> excerpts alludes to you. The first one is, do you want to comment on what they said allegedly happened 13 years ago between you and Belichick? And the follow-up question, which I would like you to answer, is when is the last time you kick somebody's ass? Both of those two I'd like to know the answer to. <laughs> Look, there's been, there's been so many books written about, about New England that I haven't read any of them because I, I lived through it. And, and all that, that stuff is, is ancient history. Uh, I haven't I haven't really been in that situation in in a long time, uh, Nick. But you know, it's one of those things okay. there. Right. Right. It's uh, it's no, it's, it's a long That's time fine. in the past. I'm That's just fine. focusing. I like, on the by the way, I like your chances. I like Thanks. your chances, Coach. For yeah. the record, go ahead, Wilds. <laughs> but I like Coach's chances. Okay, okay, Scott. So, Mike, I'll ask. Here's the thing about sitting down face to face. Everyone's so upset about this, Nick. If you were to leave the show. Or, Mangini, if you were to leave the show to do, like, celebrity boxing or something. And if you've been talking about this for years, <laughs> that you've been unhappy, Nick. And you're like, ah, you yeah. know. And then you, you put your narrow house up on the market, you know. And like you're like, ah, no, it's a big thing, mm -hmm. guy. And my narrow house is up on the market. And then yeah. finally, you announce that you decide to leave the show. Something that we all knew was going to happen. I hope this doesn't happen for the record as much as I joke around. Uh, sure. Something that we all knew was going to like has been percolating for two years. Do you think? And you send me a text like Wilds, want to grab coffee? And I'm like, no, not really, dude. We wanted you to stay, yeah, and you bounced on us. Like, that, why that, do I need to sit down? And you know, like, you want to drag me coach, over the coals because that's I, not you, what we didn't get lattes together? Yes, it's it's not. Co well, coach, look, coach, I, I, coach, I think that, I think that's an interesting way to to frame it, but. If, if you say that you're unhappy and the person that you work for 
doesn't do anything to, to make you happy. If you say that you want to stay and the person that's in charge of having you stay or not stay doesn't do anything to, to help you stay, what other alternative do you have besides leave? And then if, if you've been together for 20 years and, and won an unprecedented amount of games and had an incredible amount of success, I would think that that would merit a, a, a sit down. I, I don't know. It, it seems like it, yes. it might be worth a little bit more than a, you know, a, a call. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, of course. I, I, Go ahead, I, I, I'm but with you. Look, I, Belichick didn't break any laws or any rules by not meeting with him face to face. But like you said, considering their history and the length of it, I definitely think it, it would have been the right thing to do to sit down and meet face to face. Coach, something else interesting in the book. Um, Seth Wickersham said that Belichick conducted or uh, commissioned a study of like the greatest winners of this generation, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Tiger Woods, and Tom Brady. And he found that Tom Brady, unlike the other three, was not at his best when he felt like he had a chip on his shoulder, something to prove, but he was at his best when he felt like he was in a loving, supportive environment. Now, that on the surface, when I look at Brady, it seems like that would make sense. But then when I look at the history of New England, he wasn't in a loving, I, I don't think, you can correct me if I'm wrong, he wasn't in a loving, supportive environment, and he still thrived and won six Super Bowls. So do you see the, the difference in what I'm saying? And, and it seems like his history is the opposite of what that uh, study would say. Who did that study? Who, 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 who <laughs> I, I would love to know who did that study to say that he would be better in a loving, supporting. What would he have won? 20 Super Bowls in a row if he was in a loving, supporting environment? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think that's, I don't think you would right. characterize that environment as, as necessarily loving and supportive. Maybe someone from the organization did the study to say that, hey, this has been a loving, supporting environment, but it's an environment that's based on production and results and, and, and uh, you know, those, those descriptions are, are not ones that, that I, would, I would characterize. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how they, they came up with that, but that makes no sense. Well, Coach, look, where there's smoke, there's fire. There have been multiple articles written. There have been multiple books written about the relationship, however poorly it deteriorated over the years between uh, Brady and Belichick. You know, does Belichick want to win this game? Probably more than anything. Does Brady? Yes, as well. And we talked all week about how Brady may be thrown off his game because of however that relationship ended heading back into Foxborough Sunday night. He almost might be too, too far inside his own head and it might work against him. You know this guy. What's Brady thinking heading into a game like this? Is he going to let everything that happened really affect him as he walks back into Foxborough Sunday night? No. I, I, one of the things that, that's been amazing about Tom is the way he is able to compartmentalize. Look, he's been on the, the biggest stage multiple times and, and always delivered. And he has an incredible ability to to control what he can control and, and to make sure that that when it comes time to play, he's he's not letting himself be hijacked by by emotion. That that to me is is one of his greatest gifts is his ability to to block those things out and and to perform at a at a level, you know, that's really been unseen. Yeah. And just two quick things. One is I'm also fascinated by the study because the idea that Tiger Tiger Woods was unbeatable. When everyone loved him, and then when the world turned on him, is when his career turned. So I also, I don't, there's a lot of that I just don't understand. But again, it's just an excerpt of a study, so maybe we'll get more of it. But coach, I just want to follow up very quickly on, on this with Brady. Belichick learned under Bill Parcells. Parcells was very regimented, had rules. And then there was Lawrence Taylor, who kind of was allowed to do whatever he wanted because he's Lawrence Taylor. Does it surprise you that Belichick never bent for his Lawrence Taylor? And it's not like Brady wanted to miss practice. Brady just didn't want to be kicked out of the door, out the door early. Like if Belichick, he didn't, he didn't take that lesson from Parcells. Does that surprise you? Well, not 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 really. Going going through it, you know, on a different level. I started when I was I think 23, and then I left when I was 34. So 
I changed a lot over the course of, of 10 years, but the relationship, the age difference between myself and Bill, it, it stayed the same. And we've all been in those those situations where when you you come into a place as, as, a, as a young guy, that the perception doesn't necessarily change from, from the people who are above you. And and that can be really difficult. And and look, Tom was there for 20 years. Tom became a dad. Tom became so many so many different things. He he became middle aged while he was there. But the relationship <laughs> stayed the same. And and it 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 has to it has to adjust. And I think if there was one player that you were going to adjust for, it would it would be Tom It'd Brady. Be Tom. Now that being said, yep. one of the most effective things in the locker room, and you heard it from free agents over and over again, is. If Bill can treat Tom that way and coach Tom that way, then of course he can coach me that way. So it it also works in in the locker room from from that perspective. Well, the author of the book we're talking about, It's Better to Be Feared, is Seth Wickersham. Coach, we're actually going to have him on tomorrow. We're going to get more insight into that relationship between Brady and Belichick, their run in New England. We are looking forward.